All right, I've got some new critiques for everybody. Remember, if you would like to have your word critiqued, just go to the New Masters Academy community forums. This is a free service that we're putting on during the crisis. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we've got our first painting here. Uh, I really like this. I find it charming. It looks like there's a lot of uh, feeling in it. I get the sense that this was sort of painted with love. Uh, we've got sort of a cartoony style here. Um, there's definitely a designing of the shapes going on. And it's not totally um, flat, like the chin, the nose, the forehead, how that plane breaks. There is a lot of form here, but what I'd like to do with this uh, critique is I'd like to just sort of draw from your drawing in a, in a sort of with a similar sensibility. And I'm just going to push that three-dimensional idea even further. I'm going to show you that um, oftentimes we don't need to resort to shape. Uh, we can get to our shape from a three-dimensional perspective. So all I'm doing here is I am looking at the shapes and the design that you've got and I'm just trying to justify it three-dimensionally in a way that makes sense. And so I'm using my knowledge of anatomy, I'm using my knowledge of the head, but essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to build something that's a little more architectural, a little more sculptural, something that is going to uh, help um, help us in, in, in our, in our process. And so and there, there obviously are a little, a few issues here that I'm not copying exactly, you know, like the near side eye is very large uh, compared to the far side eye. You've got, you've got a really dramatic fall off uh, in perspective as we move past the center line into space, which probably is a little too much. Uh, it's also happening on the on the far side shoulder. You know, it could be stylistic. There could be a reason, you know, you're doing that, but to me it ends up looking like a telephoto, um, I'm sorry, a fisheye uh, lens, which is probably, you know, it, it's, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone that route with it. So, you know, uh, you know, eyeballs a sphere, you know, it's, it's uh, like in the case of the near side eye, you can see, I, it looks like a sphere kind of on the left side, but on the right side, it just stretches in such a way that it doesn't feel like a, there's a sphere in there. You know, the mouth, wraps around the cylinder like you've got the shape of it but you know I don't have the sense that there's one corner and it's wrapping around to another corner uh, I think you did a pretty good job on the chin on, on how you did that and I like the way you tucked these uh, jowls down into into the neck I thought that was done really well um, but just we, we can push it a little bit more you know we, we can we can build everything and, and thinking three-dimensionally can actually become our, our default uh, way of thinking artistically and so um, we can correct these shapes and we can um, do a lot of three-dimensional drawing as sort of a rehearsal um, for our final lines that go over the top. But, um, you know, and even in how the, the collar, you know, wraps around, we want that follow-through. We want to feel like it's actually going up and around the cylinder of the neck and then it's coming back. And uh, the more we can push that, the, the easier it's going to be for us to uh, light these forms and model these forms. You know, like if you have a, this this scaffolding underneath, let's say this was a very lightly, you know, drawn or, or or it was painted underneath. Then, as you can see here, as I'm showing, um, figuring out where the lighting should be, even if this is totally from imagination, and even if this is uh, not the lighting you have in your in your reference, um, we can easily decide where that is. We're not going to struggle as much with that because we've figured out the three dimensional form. We've solved these problems. We've thought our way through it. And so my advice to you is going to be to do that a little bit more three-dimensional construction and a little bit less um, of, of the designing with shape. And um, you can come in here, like you could come and correct these shapes, like, but you've already got forms, which is nice. So this drawing's fantastic. I just wanted to start actually by pointing out something that you do really well here that um, most of us miss which is that you're um, wrapping your features and your forms around the head convincingly and in basically pers correct perspective. And that's tricky to do. And obviously, you know, you could uh, probably take this even further than you have, you know, for example. So we've got a suggestion of how the, you know, the jaw is, but there's a difference between the jaw and the actual um, masseter muscles. We could add the hyoid bone. You know, maybe we could, you know, compress a little bit the line up there of the of the brow. Maybe we're showing the bottom plane and the antihelix of the ear a little bit differently. But uh, you're you're doing the right thing. Like you you're 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 killing it there. So keep going like that. 
But um, my critique for you has to do with how um, you're handling these values because what I'm noticing is that your half tones on the light side are getting too close in value to the uh, values of the shadow side. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to find sort of where you have put your, your core shadow. And I'm doing this with, with hatching. This is how I usually draw. You can do it anyway. And so now I'm filling in... Um, what's supposed to be an even tone. Obviously I'm doing this pretty pretty quickly here in Procreate, but I'm gonna fill in with an even tone. And then once that tone's in, and once it's visually grouping more as the shadow group, then I can come in and I can add darks, whether that's local color, like like the like the beard, uh, which I'm imagining, you know, something like this is going on here. I can go on the light side even and find some darks to actually frame the head. So now I've got a dark on, on either side of the face and it frames the face and it, um, I can find the darks of uh, you know occlusion shadows like the eye the, between the eyelids and the, and the nostril, and then you know in, in, for the half tones here now I can uh, in a more controlled way with my values come in and I can model these forms uh, three dimensionally and so this is sort of the uh, approach I mean not not so much the way I'm doing the drawing but in terms of the um, the steps this is the approach that uh, Mark Westermo teaches you know uh, it's illustration drawing basically. And uh, I recommend you take his course and also Chris Legospi to, to, to study that a little bit more because I think you could benefit from that. So this drawing's awesome. I love the texture. I love the the rendering of it. I think I mean I think it's undeniable. This is just a cool drawing. Um, it looks like you have done Steve Houston's advanced figure drawing. Uh, yeah, the the the, yeah, the the rendering technique is very cool. So um, I think though we're having a little bit of construction issues, like the center line, things aren't quite adding up. The, the far side scapula is not really, it doesn't seem like it, it would really be there. And so what I, my recommendation is also going to be my critique demonstration here for you, which is that I want you to do Renaissance figure drawing course by Glenn Vilpu because um, this process, which is gesture and construction and building the figure from the inside out, um, would benefit you in the technique that you're doing and hopefully I can I can show you that. So I mean I'm losing the foot right now. I don't think it's a good idea to have a foot just popping out from behind, you know, uh, it looks funny, it looks flat. Um, so maybe there's a, you know, we could change the pose a little bit, but for the purposes of this I'm just going forward. So I'm tr I'm just going to move forward. So I'm trying to find the the rib cage. Um, I'm trying to find where the the scapulae uh, where they would lie. Um, how the 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 rib cage is going to you know, insert and, and relate to the, the pelvis. Uh, one thing I notice just looking at your drawing and trying to replicate it is that that scapula is too wide versus how tall it is. The, the dimensions of the spine of the scapula versus the height of the body should be the, around the same and yours seems stretched, which is okay. Maybe you're, you're trying to get that dramatic look. I mean, even Michelangelo did a very similar thing in some of his work. But I am noticing that, so I ended up sort of just going with what what you had in terms of your scapula, more or less. But um, as you think your way through it, if you're drawing more uh, like this, at least as an underdrawing, let's say, and you're thinking your way through the, these forms more, um, you start to get a sense of like where the dynamics are, where it's pushing, you know, where the weight is, how it's moving, and uh, most importantly, where all the surfaces are, because you're trying to. Um, do this really cool uh, effect you know it's almost like a cityscape an abstract cityscape or like a turner it reminds me of some uh, some chinese um, artist art that i've seen but you're trying to do this effect and so you need to know where the darks are otherwise the effect won't work so it's abstract but it needs to be like based in, in some kind of reality so what i'm trying to show you here is that if you you build from the inside out it will be easier for you to figure out where your shadow side is going to be and what that form is doing and so in some of your areas where you've got these lines or the construction underneath doesn't quite make sense you could uh, clean that up a lot and i think that would really um, benefit your work. So you can see here, like, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You could also change the light, you could change the pose, you could draw from imagination this way, but it gives you the ability to really to figure out what's going on because there are so many areas and like these subtle tones that you've got there, it gives the illusion of that you're looking at something that's real too. Like also like uh, same thing with like highly rendered academic art. You get the sense you're looking at something real because of the subtle values that you see. But if you look closer, it doesn't quite work, you know, like there's construction problems there. So I think if you were to construct internally a little bit more and you would practice that and you would think about the gesture coming from the inside a little bit more, uh, you could pull this effect off better. Uh, beautiful work. Okay, another super advanced, beautiful piece. 
Uh, this reminds me of a piece I critiqued uh, by Alex that was also really um, advanced. Also, this this does look like you've done the you know the Russian academic drawing course on our website. So you also, you also have there's also there's also some some things that are not part of that course that I think you you know you're doing well here as well. It's not just that. But um, my advice to you is actually similar to the advice I gave Alex, which is that uh, if you're going to do this sort of carved three-dimensional style, then you have to have a little bit more anatomy, anatomical understanding. So, you know, in this case, the overlap you had of how the deltoid was inserting onto the arm it was going behind the biceps, which is wrong, has to go in front. So I'm just showing you a little bit of how you'd have to kind of think, you'd have to think your way through some of these problems using that anatomical knowledge. So... Um, also, this is not a big deal, but the eyes seem a little bit high to me, maybe. Um, it actually kind of gives it a caricature kind of look, which maybe you were going for. But um, yeah, this area is, is tricky. You know, another thing I'm noticing is it looks like latissimus dorsi doesn't quite seem like it would be able to get wrap around and get to its uh, its origin the way you've drawn it, because it's got to get to the back of the pelvis there, the high point. And so there might be an issue there. Uh, also, I'm sort of thinking of serratus anterior, and I'm not really feeling like the latissimus is bulging to move over those muscles the way that maybe it should. So um, since I sort of drew um, a few parts of the deltoid, uh, there's actually seven uh, parts, but usually we think of them as three. I'm going to just diagram really quickly. So like here's a simple idea of a clavicle uh, that's inserting into the scapula. Uh, there's teres major. Here's the humerus coming forward. And then... Um, so the, we've got this rear head here. We have a head coming off of the acromion. And then we've got the lateral third of the clavicle. We've got a head coming off of that as well. And then we've got pectoralis, which is coming off of the medial head third of the uh, clavicle. So I'll just diagram this from, for you from above. So we've got the S-curve of the clavicle. Why is it S-curve? Well, it's got to wrap around your neck so you, so you don't choke yourself You know when you lift your arms. It's like, it's like bicycle handles. Then we've got the spine of the scapula that's coming back this way. It sort of creates like a like, an, like a bow and arrow shape if you were to mirror it. And then off of the acromion process, you know, you've got uh, these. It shows the major breaks of these groups of muscles here. So those are the those are the the origins of, of the deltoid, the parts of the deltoid. And here is the origin of where pectoralis should come off of. So in this case, you know, you've got that area is huge in your drawing. You'd have to. I think you'd have to model that out a little bit more. You'd have to think your way through a little bit. Um, also, kind of, I have no problem like losing form in, in, in shadow and if it's the background, if it makes sense. But in this case, it's right there in the core of your drawing, you know? And so it's also key. It's like this compression of how he's sitting it seems very important. So I wouldn't do it in this case. I would go in there and figure it out. Um, yeah, some of this line work's really nice. It also reminds me of Godfrey Baumus, if you've, if you've studied him. So yeah, a little bit more an anatomical structure, thinking your way, you know, uh, you know, you're three-dimensional in how you're carving these sides out, but you need to be more three-dimensional in, in the forms, the anatomical forms. So uh, one thing I'm noticing, obviously, is he's sitting here on a block and the feet are planted on the ground, the knees are forward, you know, the pelvis is, is flat, the shoulders uh, are coming over and the arms are making contact with the legs in the same point. In other words, this whole pose is symmetrical. Which can be interesting. You, know, you take something asymmetrical and organic, like a human figure, and you make it symmetrical. That's that can be interesting. Although, you know, I think it'd probably be more interesting if just like design repetition or um, repetition and variation that you would also do something else. But one thing I noticed though is that one construction line, as you can see here, is it's sort of not lining up with the others. It's not um, working in the structure you've set of these elbows. So I think what we're going to need to do. So you're setting the rules. It's your universe. If you're saying that all of this stuff is symmetrical, um, but the elbow is violating that rule, it's just like if you were drawing a head and the eyes, nose, but then the mouth wasn't following the same construction line. So I'm just going to stretch it out here and uh, get this to sort of line up with the sort of rules of your drawing world that you've created. So um, we can rotate the upper arm to sort of make that make that work. We're going to rotate this area. Um, I think that... Uh, yeah, if you're going to go for this sort of symmetrical situation, and this whole thing is, you know, it's in one point perspective, if you're going to do that, then you're probably going to need to uh, be a little bit more precise. Like, you don't want to let anything slip. And I would go and check even more than what I've done here. I'd check sort of everything to see uh, how it's lining up. Um, it is interesting that the head is, is in a profile, even though the rest of the body we're seeing um, from above and to the left, that tells me that maybe the face 
is the neck's actually turning, but yet I'm not getting any lines on the neck that show me that. So the head's actually not really going with the body in that way. Uh, also, you know, you're sort of giving us this block, and we know that the you know the heels are back against that. But then if that's the case, then the, then the feet are not in the correct perspective. So we need to bring that foot forward. So um, I mean, awesome work, really really advanced stuff. Um, if you're going to go with this uh, sort of architectural one point perspective symmetry sort of idea, then I think we just need to be a little bit more consistent with it and uh, make sure that we're, you know, that we're uh, mastering that. Um, the other, yeah, the other thing that I was saying um, is that uh, a little more anatomical structure. So like, like for example, we're, we're sort of missing the, the pectoralis where it would be inserted on that far side arm. I think we can get that. I think we can work out a little bit more how the torso is coming together. But uh, yeah, fantastic work. And it's really fun to critique. Yeah, keep drawing and keep sharing your work, please.